Hey, uh, I'm Raj Gopal. I uh, started out as an engineer at Yahoo and uh, uh, worked with Zynga uh, and later I was working with uh, Mintra as a product manager for shopping experience. And uh, what I'm going to share with you today is uh, a few things that we used to do at uh, Zynga and Mintra. We used to always drive uh, user experience related decisions with data. I'm just going to share a uh, brief overview of all uh, I mean, all that you could uh, take back and uh, dive deep into. Okay, so the first thing, uh, why do we have to do uh, data-driven uh, decisions when it comes to user experience? Uh, it's always been perceived as a uh, art form. Uh, I mean, uh, designers are typically, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, at least the image of a designer in most people's mind would be uh, someone who deals with the uh, art form, uh, but that's not the and that's not what UX is all about. Um, it, it, it's about the overall experience that a user gets across uh, um, across various touch points, including the uh, web product that you build. And uh, the reason um, the reason we uh, 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 we I mean the reason we should be driving most of these decisions using data is. Um, uh, if you don't if you don't have a standard process in place. Uh, you might just uh, not be able to make the right decision uh, most of the times. So this is, uh, the idea is to increase the probability of uh, making the right decision uh, by uh, bringing process around uh, how how we make that decision. Sorry. We want to be able to get uh, the UX related decisions that we make right most of the time. That is one. And uh, the second thing is that uh, we should be able to repeat it uh, consistently. Uh, if we could get it right once and if we can't get it right the second time, uh, it doesn't make sense. So uh, the moment we uh, have a predict predictable mechanism over how we make uh, these decisions, it becomes uh, 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 repeatable and uh, has a higher probability of being the right one. And the, the other, other, other thing is that uh, when it comes to user experience, everyone thinks that uh, they are an expert in user experience. And okay, no mind. Sir, go market it then. ये एंगल सही है। मच बेटर सर। सर ये तो सही। सर घुमा के देखते हैं। You know how frustrating this could uh, become for uh, UX designer or anyone when sales and marketing folks get get their hands on to uh, user experience design, thinking that. Uh, they, they, they know uh, users better. So everyone thinks that uh, they know what user experience, uh, what the right user experience for a given thing is going to be, uh, but that's not true. Uh, until you launch uh, the product uh, out into the wild and uh, uh, let the users tell you how the experience is, you wouldn't know whether that's the right experience. So uh, we're going to take uh, this uh, mock website as the example. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a mock of Zoomcar. Uh, it's, it's, uh, let's assume we are uh, managing uh, the user experience for this particular product. And the product lets you uh, book a, a self-drive car, uh, specifying a pickup time and a return time, and selecting the car model. And the moment you uh, look for available cars, you get a list from which you could choose one. And uh, you would be able to fill out your details and uh, uh, rent it out. This is the sample website that we are going to use throughout the talk. So the first rule of thumb is just track almost every piece of data that's uh, that could be tracked on a website. Uh, like uh, the previous speaker said, a lot of times you would want uh, a piece of data two months back, but 
uh, you might not have it unless you track it in well in advance, uh, even though you might not need it at the time when you uh, think about tracking. So uh, it, it's uh, the, the rule of thumb is track every click, every hover, every uh, uh, keyboard uh, usage, and uh, uh, success or uh, failure outcomes from any action that the user takes, as well as uh, information about the user. This could mean uh, the user's uh, email address and uh, any any user identifiable information. Uh, there are privacy concerns around that, but let's ignore that for a moment. Uh, and uh, the second thing would be page level context, uh, which would include uh, information on what went into the page when the page was displayed to the user. Uh, uh, most of the pages that we deal with are dynamic in nature, and the content could be different for one user versus the other. And uh, we should have tracked context about the page, that is, if the page has, uh, say, 10 widgets, of which uh, 8 would show dynamically for uh, uh, different users, uh, I mean, different set of 8 would show dynamically for different users, you need to be sure which set of 8 a particular user encountered. And uh, the other, other one that you need to track is session level context. And session level context uh, uh, could include anything that goes across the uh, browsing session. and uh, uh, we should be tracking all actions and events. So in case of this example, let's look at what we'll be tracking uh, in, uh, for this uh, widget. So if you notice, there's a sign in register button on the top. And if the user has to rent the car, he has to register or sign in here as well. So you would probably want to track uh, from where the user uh, started, to, started the sign in process or register process. That is one thing, the so, uh, source of start of the sign-in or register. And you track the sign-in slash register form itself. Uh, you track every action that the user takes on the form itself. And if you look at this book a car widget, uh, there's a date picker. And the date picker has a text box as well. So the user could type there or the user could uh, select a date from there. And the moment uh, the user uh, selects a date or types in a date, you want to make sure that uh, you've recorded that event and you also want to uh, make sure that you uh, record uh, record whether the selector uh, the, the type date is valid or not, and things like that, so that uh, you could go back and uh, figure out why something went wrong uh, when, when the user tried to uh, submit this form. And you uh, you also track uh, which car model the user uh, searched for and. Uh, uh, whether the check availability returned back uh, a success or error response. If at all it returns error, error response, you'd uh, better track the uh, error code as well. So having the basic level of tracking done for the entire website would let you answer a lot of uh, questions around um, what is going on in the website. Uh, for instance, you could figure out uh, when do users register? Do they do most users register when they uh, uh, when they are about to check out? That is, when they are about to book the uh, rental car, or uh, do they normally register when they come onto the page? Uh, and and if you look look at it, there are these three links on top. Uh, you would want to be able to quantify the importance of every uh, item on on a page, and uh, by tracking all the clicks and uh, navigations that happen on the uh, page, you would be able to figure out whether tariff is an important enough link or not. Uh, for instance, a lot of people might not even read policies, so you would get a sense of uh, how important tariff is uh, in comparison to policies. If at all you need uh, need some space cleared there, you would know which one to clear up. And uh, you would also find uh, which, which field users uh, struggle to fill out uh, the most, uh, because uh, you'd get to know that uh, one particular field is throwing up a lot of errors, which means that that's the field that uh, is difficult to fill the most. So essentially, there are a bunch of questions that you could answer using all the data that's uh, tracked with basic events and uh, session context. And uh, uh, these would be questions that give you a sense of what is happening on the website and uh, uh, what is important and what is not. And the moment you understand your website in and out, uh, you could start making uh, improvements over it and uh, uh, give a better ex better experience to the users. So, I'm going to walk uh, walk you through a, a bunch of techniques that would uh, enable you to uh, uh, what do you call 
uh, assess what's going wrong in a website and or or what the users might be wanting to know. Uh, I'm just going to walk through the tools and then uh, talk about how we could um, uh, use these to give a better experience. So uh, a funnel is nothing but a, a series of uh, what you call numbers that gives you a sense of uh, what percentage of users who uh, what, what percentage of users progress from one step to another. So uh, if there is a flow, you divide it, divide the flow up into multiple uh, phases. And each phase becomes uh, one phase, uh, one one, uh, one piece in the funnel. And uh, you start tracking uh, what percentage of users move from one phase to another. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, say 100 people land onto the page. Uh, uh, what is the uh, 72 percent? Uh, percent 72 people move to the uh, search page, and uh, 54 end up trying to book one. That is, select a car and click on the book button, and then uh, only 18 percent end up booking one. And uh, there's this one, one more thing that you could use, uh, which is called cohort, cohort analysis. Cohort analysis is uh, uh, the, I mean, uh, when, I, when I say that uh, you do a cohort analysis, uh, what I mean by that is you slice and dice users by various criteria. You segment users, and uh, uh, it, it, you could even segment sessions, and you uh, try to uh, look at the various metrics that you uh, care about uh, for e each of those uh, segments. So this, this enables you to isolate a problem or isolate a, a user need that is being expressed. Now let me just walk you through an example uh, so that it gives a better sense. Uh, yeah. Imagine Imagine you wake up one day and you find that uh, uh, this part of the funnel has uh, suddenly shrunk down to say 32 percent. Uh, that is 100 percent. This is 72 percent. Uh, the, the second phase is 72 percent, and only uh, say uh, 30 percent of people end up uh, trying to book a car at all. Uh, you start wondering uh, what could be going wrong. So one thing that you could do is start um, trying to figure out if something is radically wrong in the website, uh, which you would be able to uh, by looking at the basic sanity metrics and uh, looking for errors. Uh, let's assume all that uh, I didn't give you any clue. So the next thing that you could probably do here is uh, uh, split up users based on based on various uh, uh, parameters. So you could split them up based on uh, demographic information, how, uh, what kind of, what class of cars do they use, uh, or, uh, or, or uh, what, uh, what is the date in which they joined? Have they already made a booking or not? So you could start comparing various. Uh, segments with each other and see if uh, the problem is with one or two of those segments and not with the entire uh, population of audience. So uh, when this drops, it need, it need not necessarily drop across the population. That is the point. So what you could do is you could possibly, uh, yeah. So let's assume we segmented by various uh, 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 dimensions. And we finally ended up uh, segmenting by uh, uh, the, the, the uh, whether the user rented a car for uh, for a long term or for a short term in the past, and you end up with two different uh, funnel comparisons. So the first thing that you are looking at is uh, all the users who rent cars only for a few hours, and the second set that you are looking at is users who rent cars for a uh, car for a few days. So there could be a set of users who use the car just to go to a movie or to a restaurant and uh, uh, return back. And if uh, th those users would be looking for a short enough time slot, in the here, the users would be trying to pick uh, uh, pick up time and return time, which are just a few hours apart. Whereas in the second case, they would be trying to uh, choose uh, pick up and uh, return time, which are few days apart. And you realize that for the users who book. Uh, on a hourly basis, there's no, uh, not much difference. Whereas for the users uh, who try to, uh, who normally book for longer uh, term, uh, there is a uh, lot of difference in, uh, th th that is where the decline in uh, uh, conversion is happening. So uh, the moment you realize this, you would be able to uh, 
uh, start looking at what could be going wrong for these users. It could be quite possible that uh, 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 the, the next few days are fragmented into multiple pieces by all those people who are trying to book uh, just for a few hours. So uh, a person looking to book a car for multiple days is unable to find uh, an available car. So how do we come to realize that? Uh, you, could do, you could follow a few uh, techniques to find that. One would be if you are tracking, um, if you are doing screen recording, you would be able to see what the users actually doing on the website. You could uh, segment users uh, by the same criteria using which you segmented in the previous previous analysis, and uh, pick a few users who fall into that uh, bucket of users who uh, book a car for multiple days, and you start uh, looking at their screen recording. You you get an you get an idea of uh, uh, so for instance if in the recording if the people were I mean if these users were going back and forth quite a lot uh, say the user filled up the form came to the next page and uh, say the user filled up this form uh, with with a certain date came to this next page and then went back again and changed the date and came back again here and so on and so forth you would get a sense that uh, something is uh, wrong with, I mean, the, the problem is availability because you see that uh, cars aren't available in that page. And you could you could get to know this even by looking at your, all the events that you've tracked. Uh, uh, you would have tracked page context. So in page context, if you track something like, uh, what is the percentage of uh, items? Uh, so in this example, we are displaying say five uh, different cars, uh, if, if, if at all we track how, uh, that f uh, three out of uh, five are available uh, when this user visited, we would get to know whether there's a correlation between the number of vehicles that were available for a given user and the uh, percentage of users who moved on to the next phase. Could make, make use of these two and uh, figure out whether um, there is a reason for the problem. And the moment you realize that that, and that is the reason, there are multiple ways to fix it. You start hypothesizing uh, uh, around what the user might be looking for. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you just uh, start showing the user uh, which other dates, uh, which which date ranges he could ch uh, choose within uh, around the date range he specified, uh, which might have availability. Or you could suggest an alternate car. Uh, I mean, move up the available cars on the top or whatever. You come up with multiple solutions. You don't know which one is going to work. And when you don't know which one is going to work, you could do a split testing. But before we get to uh, get to split testing, let me just give you a brief of um, how you could go about tracking all the data that we uh, saw earlier. So the screen casting and uh, screen recording and uh, heat map, click map, and all this could be tracked using clicktail and uh, uh, all the events and uh, everything else could be uh, I mean all the page context session context and event context could be tracked uh, with Google Analytics mix panel and metrics and the moment you mature beyond this point and uh, uh, get to a point where you have to slice and dice uh, data uh, randomly uh, tableau and click view might come in handy and then you could graduate up to um, what you call specialized databases and whatnot Uh, what does split testing mean? You have a bunch of hypotheses in hand. That is, you you think that X might work or Y might work, uh, but you want to figure out which one is actually going to work. Uh, when this is the case, uh, and you have an existing website in place, um, so you use the existing website as uh, the the uh, baseline, and you want to roll out something only if that is going to improve uh, improve the experience over the baseline. And you could either roll out uh, bigger chunks uh, and, and test whether the uh, hypothesis is working, working in a holistic uh, way. For instance, uh, if you wanted to uh, uh, bring in a, so you realize that uh, the users are struggling to find uh, available cars among the cars that are being displayed. Uh, one thing that you could do is just put up a uh, filter uh, right there 
which would let you uh, let the user uh, uh, look only at the available cars or uh, in, in the first example that we looked at this car and this car is rentable from only from one location uh, imagine you have uh, i mean imagine the company goes and opens up a few more locations you would have a location selector and instead of having a location uh, i mean which one do you uh, make the user choose mandatorily and does the user always have to uh, choose a car model and then uh, move and figure out where that car model is available or would the user want to uh, choose a location and then look which car model is available at that time uh, this is something that would vary between uh, user groups as well right so uh, if 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 you are testing a uh, bigger change on the website you just uh, uh define uh, uh i mean you call it holistic testing and when uh, when you do minor optimizations to make a funnel uh tighter uh that is fine too so yeah so let me just walk through uh how how the whole thought process would go on in this case uh first thing you need to identify a user need to make a user experience improvement and uh where does the user need come from uh, the user might communicate it directly to you uh, it could be explicit communication or implicit communication uh in the example that we saw the user was going back and forth between these two pages that is the implicit implicit communication of his need for uh, the ability to find available cars easily and in case of explicit communication the user might have uh, sent you a feedback or you might have had a, a user focused uh, session which uh, tells you uh, that the user is looking for a particular thing or it could be a hypothesis that you start with you uh, come up with a bunch of hypotheses on what might be useful to users and then you go about validating those hypotheses or it could be a business need from which you try to fit it to uh, the customers uh, uh need so the 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 way way the whole thing goes about working is you start analyzing the uh track data and you look at all this data and figure out what is going wrong with the users so the moment you uh realize that people are going back back and forth between these two pages you get to know uh that there is a need uh for a better way to find availability and uh the other other way to find it is uh, uh talk to users ask them what they are struggling with uh, even if you find a uh find a problem with the metrics and uh, you aren't able to isolate the exact problem you could just call up those users and talk to them and identify user needs uh, or you could hypothesize user needs and uh, it's it's really important to validate whether uh, people actually need it or not uh, uh you could again do this uh, by either talking to users or going to uh, going to analytics tools and trying to figure out whether you have enough data in support of uh your hypothesis and the moment you uh find the user needs you could address the user need either uh by making a change on a ch change to how the uh, page is going to how, how the website is going to be laid out that is at the uh very basic level on uh what is going to be shown to the user first and uh what is uh, going to be shown next and what not that is the uh a uh, way information is presented or it could just be uh, to do with the content that you present there so for instance uh, let's say you found that uh, users who were booking a car for the first time weren't feeling as comfortable as users who are in, uh, who have already used this service it could be quite possible that so we just stop there and try to think what could be the questions going on in the minds of people who uh, book for the first time and uh that would have been answered uh to people who book it uh for a subsequent uh time so you might just come across things like okay uh the users probably uh, worried that you rent a car you go crash it who's going to pay for it it could be that you just need to tell them hey don't worry uh we have a good insurance policy so you don't have to uh worry about it uh, or it could be a bunch of other things so uh, the change could be in uh, in content as well uh or it could be in the flow uh, make the entire checkout flow uh, as what you call squeezed in as possible so that there are a uh, lower number of drop off points if drop off the problem that you are facing um 
and it could be a combination of uh, some of these uh, which results in a feature. So uh, you would have seen this widget uh, almost everywhere, uh, almost on every e-commerce site. Uh, people who bought this also bought. That would have come from, a, uh, that, that's a feature that includes content, uh, 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 content and uh, what do you call, uh, flow changes uh, in how the user purchases an item. As soon as you roll out any, any change, track data again and feed it back to the whole process. And the key thing is, every every user experience improvement should cha start with an objective. If it's a flow optimization, start with an objective uh, on what percentage of uh, uh, what percentage improvement should uh, come in terms of uh, conversion in that uh, uh, funnel. And if it's a page optimization, a page would ideally have uh, one goal that is the page is supposed to uh, lead up the user to. Uh, I mean, every page would have an, have an objective. For certain pages, it could be that the page has to take the users to uh, another class of page. For instance, in this case, the objective of the search page was to take the user to a uh, uh, booking page, and the objective of the home page was to make the user search for a car. And uh, a page optimization should result in uh, uh, improvement in the objective of that particular page. And Similarly, for content or uh, a feature or a call to action that you're uh, putting on the page, uh, you need to object, uh, assign objective to it and uh, see whether that objective was met. And if it's not met, cut it out, uh, cut the feature out, or uh, improve the feature so that it meets the objective uh, sooner. Any questions? Can you tell us about the list of services and tools again that you used? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, the list of services and tools that you used. Uh, okay. Sure. And which one is useful for what uh, scenarios? Sure. Yeah. I should walk you through that. And uh, Clicktail and Lucky Orange uh, let, let you do user testing virtually. So it's, it's not to deal with... Uh, so uh, while uh, the typical analytics tools look at uh, uh, users as in, in an aggregate form, Clicktail and Lucky Orange uh, let you sample users and dig, uh, dive deep into them. Uh, they give you uh, the ability to record uh, the screens of uh, a certain percentage of all your users. So you could say, uh, record, record the screens of 2% of all my users. And you could go back and start viewing uh, how the user actually interacted with the, with the website. So uh, when you when you look at uh, uh, stops or pauses in mouse movement or uh, mouse hovering over a, a specific area, you get to know that there is a that, that is an area of confusion, and uh, you could then start uh, uh, thinking what could be wrong there and come up with a whole bunch of hypotheses, go about validating and whatnot. And these two, two uh, these two tools also give you the ability to look at heat maps, click maps, and whatnot. Uh, that, that is what these specialize in. Uh, you wouldn't probably be using it on a day-to-day -day basis. You'd do it. Uh, you, you'd use these tools periodically to uh, get a sense of how users are dealing, uh, act, what you call interacting with your website. And these could be time-consuming when you start looking at uh, screen uh, recordings. It, it might just suck up a lot of time, so uh, need to be handled judiciously. And uh, Google Analytics, Mixpanel, and Kissmetrics uh, deal with. Uh, I mean, they, they, they mostly do event-based analytics. So Google Analytics was doing uh, page-based analytics to begin with, while Mixpanel and Kissmetrics were doing uh, event-based analytics to begin with. But uh, all three of them have converged to a certain point now. All three of them uh, are good at doing uh, event-based analytics. That is, uh, to know at an aggregate level uh, how, what percentage of users are doing what actions and how the sequence of these actions looks like. And uh, you could also do uh, cohort analysis, which uh, would let you know uh, uh, how the how the users uh, how various uh, sets of users uh, use the website and the next set of tools Tableau and ClickView uh, could connect with any kind of data source. It could be your database, it could be your Excel sheet that you have, it could be anything that you have, 
and it would uh, let you slice and dice data uh, in, a, in a way that none of these other tools would let you do. And the moment you grow beyond a certain scale, uh, you would want to uh, track all the, I mean, a lot of these tools wouldn't support you uh, well enough, so you would want to uh, push, all, push all the events asynchronously into your DB so that it's, it doesn't block your website and make your experience bad. So you use a non-blocking DB and uh, pull f uh, from there to data warehouse and do all the upstream analysis. And uh, specialized analytics tools could be, uh, for instance, uh, e-commerce sites uh, have this tool called RJ Metrics, which is tailored to e-commerce sites and it uh, gives you tons of things out of the box and it, uh, 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 there could be specialized analytics tools for various industries. Thank you.